Another day of practice is in the books here in Berea. The Browns preparing for the Denver Broncos. I'm Dan Lamy, joined by Mary Kay Cabot. And Mary Kay, today, of course, being Thursday, we got to hear from the coordinators. And uh, some talk about Dwayne Bowe today. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I asked John DiFilippo, what is his future? He was a healthy scratch last week. He said there will be a point where we will need Dwayne Bowe this season. And, of course, <laughs> I wanted to say when. And, uh, you know, it didn't sound to me like it's going to be this week. There have been a lot of times this season, too, where it's it's felt like they could use that big target. And Dwayne Bowe's called himself a red zone threat. We haven't gotten to see it yet, though, uh, of course. Uh, we got to talk to Danny Shelton today as well. Uh, Mike Pettin uh, maybe didn't call him out, but he mentioned those personal foul penalties. And Danny Shelton, of course, apologetic about those. You know what? He was very apologetic about those today. He said, I apologize to the dog pound. I know that this was a, a game that they really wanted to win, and I put my team in a bad situation. I was too aggressive, and I will be smarter going forward. Uh, sticking with the defense and going back to the coordinators, Jim O'Neill. Uh, this was a guy who still sounds confident that this defense can get where they want it to be. You know, he really does. And, you know, we asked him a lot today about guys like Burkevius Mingo, who only played four snaps last week. Paul Kruger, who only played 28. And he said he actually talked to Barkevius Mingo about that. And he plans to get him in the game plan more. Uh, and Paul Kruger, he said, hey, look, he's only got a half a sack, but he's affecting the quarterback. He's playing better than it looks on film. And, of course, Paul Kruger playing a different position this year, a different side of the linebacking group. Uh, he wasn't the only one who got to talk to Barkevius Mingo today. You did as well. That's right. And you know what? Uh, I asked Barkevius, I said, hey, you know what? If they're not going to use you, you know, at what point do you say to them, <laughs> maybe I should just go somewhere else? And he said, I don't think it's there yet. So I thought that was kind of telling. And then I chased him down on the way out of the locker room. I said, what would it take? You know, when would you get there? And he said, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, but right now, he's a team player, and he's going to do whatever the Browns ask him to do. Uh, the Browns, of course, getting ready for the Denver Broncos. And uh, look, it does wonders for a locker room when you win a football game. The locker room has had a different vibe this week. W would you agree? I would definitely agree. I mean, you know, you've, they've got Peyton Manning coming in here, and this is a very, very confident football team. And of course, Mary Kay, injuries, always an issue. Uh, a lot of Browns that we are keeping an eye on as to whether they can go on Sunday. Yeah, you know what? Josh McCown, uh, he's been limited both days, Wednesday and Thursday, but I watched him both days in the uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes open to uh, the media, and he was moving around on that ankle just fine. So he's good to go. Tayshawn Gibson and Joe Hayden, they did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. They're both kind of iffy, and I would have to say that, that I would think that Joe Hayden's not going to play with the concussion. Not too sure about Tayshawn. And, of course, Robert Turbin, the running back, could be back as well for the first time mm -hmm. since the Browns acquired him. Brings a little power to the running game, something they could definitely use. Definitely a new dimension. All right, that's it for our Berea report. Here from, where else, Berea. For Mary Kay Cabot, I'm Dan Lobby.